In this video, we're looking at the Dell Inspiron 16 Plus, a laptop that is far under $2,000, providing you with aluminum top cover, bottom cover, keyboard deck, an RTX 4060, an Intel Core Ultra CPU, 16 gigs of RAM, and a super color accurate display. Now in this video, I do have one thing that keeps me from shouting from the rooftops the praises of this laptop, and I'm gonna get into that as we head into the performance section of this video. So definitely hang on for that because it could be a make or break for you uh, in the deciding factor of this laptop. This video is brought to you by Asus ProArt Laptops, the laptops built from the ground up for creators. More information to come later in the video. Let's talk about the build quality, which to me is outstanding. As I mentioned, it is an aluminum laptop and the materials they've chosen are nice and rigid. Not a lot of press along the top of the chassis. And as we spin down to the bottom, nearly no press on the bottom of the chassis as well. So they've chosen to use a nice thick aluminum material for this device. Now, because of that, it is a bit of a heavy device being that it looks pretty thin. So it comes in at almost six pounds, um, but it is a fairly thin device. Um, for a 16 inch laptop. Now going ahead and taking a look at the ports, you can see that we have a nice large vent on the left side with our power adapter, HDMI, USB-C. Jumping to the other side of the device, you see we have a USB type A, USB type A, headphone jack, and a micro SD card reader. Now two points of contention for this laptop. Now, first and foremost, I don't love that there's only one USB type C. I think it's a little frustrating when I have two USB-C devices and I need to get them plugged in. And so otherwise I would have to grab a converter or a dongle. Kind of annoying. I think two and two is a really nice mix in 2024. The secondary thing would be, how do you feel about a micro SD card reader? Now for me, I don't think it was really necessary to do micro. I thought full size would have been a better choice because I'm considering the upgrade path as the ability to add storage to this laptop. And this laptop does have upgradable RAM and upgradable storage. Two upgradable RAM slots, two upgradable M.2 slots. One occupied with a boot drive, one unoccupied. And normally with the micro SD card reader, I would say, okay, great. If you don't have an open M.2 slot for your upgrade path, you could go ahead and use the micro SD card reader to uh, uh, upgrade and expand your storage. However, that's not the case. You do have upgradable storage in this device. And so for me, it was a little annoying they didn't give us a full size SD card because this laptop is thick enough to support one without any issues. Now I think the ventilation is great on this laptop. We have vents along the back side and vents along each of the right and left side. And so that is super helpful in making sure that the device can stay cool and pretty quiet. So talking about the thermals, we reached a decibel level of 45 to 52 decibels during full performance on the 4K export. Is on the low end, of the upper decibel limits of like what I consider a decent decibel. You don't wanna be above like, you don't wanna be at or above like the 60 to 62, that just gets really loud and annoying. 52 is kind of pushing into that higher range. Now it was 65 to 78 degrees Celsius, which is a fairly cool temperature for this device. The ventilation is done very well. Now we're gonna get into the export times later in the video. I just wanted to walk you through the thermals. This video is brought to you by the Asus Pro P16, the flagship creator laptop from Asus that provides on the go workstation performance within a beautiful and durable military tested all aluminum chassis outfitted with a pen compatible 4K OLED Corning glass display that is durable and color accurate. It weighs four pounds and is just over a half an inch thick, capable of all day battery life for productivity tasks and fitted with the Asus dial to streamline your workflow, providing access to your most commonly used tools. Equipped with the AMD Ryzen AI9 CPU, up to 64 gigs of RAM and an RTX 4060 or 4070, this device is a powerhouse for architecture and 3D modeling work. And trust me, this is just the tip of the iceberg when looking at what the Asus ProArt P16 has to offer. Check out my full review content within the playlist linked in the YouTube cards above or in the description below. Thank you so much to Asus ProArt for sponsoring this part of the video. Now again, talking about the build quality, the assembly is very nice. The bottom cover is assembled very nicely into the side panels. It's a very well put together device. I'm really, really appreciating it. And I was actually very surprised before I received this, I'd yet to ever review an Inspiron. And I thought, man, why have I not seen one of these before? They really are a beautiful and sturdy device. Now going ahead and opening up the laptop done easily with one hand, because you know, it is a nice heavy device and you have a little bit of ergo lift there to help with the ventilation. However, it does stop there about that 45 degree angle. Now let's go ahead and check some of the screen wobble. 
bit of screen wobble. Not really my favorite. That definitely is wobbly. But let's go ahead and check out the screen flex. It is quite a rigid screen. So there's gonna be a little bit of flex, but overall it's good. Now, one thing I don't love about the laptop is the plastic bezel around the frame. I wish this would have been one of those integrated bezels. It would have looked much nicer. However, integrated bezels are more often associated with glossy displays. You'll rarely see a matte display with an integrated bezel, so just keep that in mind. Now, the cool thing about this laptop is it does have really solid color gamut range and color accuracy. We have a screen brightness of 323 nits, 99% sRGB, 82% Adobe RGB, and 82% DCI-P3 at a Delta E of one. And this is a 2560 by 1600 resolution at 120 Hertz. So a nice refresh rate on this laptop, which I know for a lot of creators, the refresh rates are very important. And I'm seeing more and more creators becoming very focused on having a higher refresh rate than kind of the standard 60 Hertz that we've seen in the past on more creator focused laptops. So it's really nice that this laptop kind of ups the game with that 120. Now this does have a 90 watt hour battery and that's providing us upwards of 10 hours of battery life for streaming video playback and passport productivity, about four hours of Photoshop work and about three hours and 41 minutes of Premiere Pro playback. So good battery life out of that 90 watt hour battery enough to get you on the go, get some projects done and keep you moving through your day. Now, let's talk about the internal of the laptop here. Matte keys, quiet, nice keyboard, really stiff snapback. They're not spongy. It's a very firm, stiff push on the keyboard. I'm very impressed by it. Full size shift keys, arrow keys, I really like the setup and there is a fingerprint reader here right on the keyboard deck, which is the power button. Now, one thing that I am a little ashamed of is the uh, smaller trackpad on this device. I just don't like that it is a bit on the small side. They had plenty of room to make it bigger and for an on the go laptop, if you're considering this as a creator, it would have been nice to have a little bit bigger of a trackpad. It is a bit on the clicky sound. So all the, although the keyboard has a nice stiff snap and it's quiet, the trackpad's a little on the loud side. Um, so here's a sample of them using both the keyboard and trackpad so you can hear what they sound like for yourself. And there is a webcam on the top bezel. It does have a manual cutoff switch, uh, a little slider that slides in front of the webcam. Here's a sample so you can hear and see for yourself. This is the webcam on the Dell Inspiron 16 Plus and a little sample of the audio for you as well. And lastly, let's talk about the audio coming out of this device. Here's a quick sample of the speakers so you can hear what it sounds like. Man, I love the rounded edges on the keyboard deck when you're resting your arms on it or moving your arms across it. It's not sharp, it's very comfortable. Even something like this uh, MacBook Air 15 I have, it has very sharp 90 degree angles. And so it just, you know, if you rub your arm across it, it's just a little more abrasive. And um, so I just think that the softness of that edge is very nice and comfortable. Holding it is very comfortable to carry around. I mean, the way I'm looking at this device, it is equal in performance to say the Dell XPS 16, nearly equal in build quality. The Dell XPS 16 does have the glossy display with the integrated bezel. I would say that's where the Dell XPS kind of has that slight advantage. And the Dell XPS has that integrated haptic trackpad. But if you're not looking for that, this is a classic clamshell laptop with a normal trackpad, really nice keyboard deck. It's, it's fantastic and it's half the price of the Dell XPS 16. So this is really a great option. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability, I'll put links in the description below. If you click through those links and do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Let's just go over the specs one more time. Remember, we do have an upgrade path. This comes with 16 gigs of RAM. You could upgrade it. it has the RTX 4060 and the Intel Core Ultra 7 155H. Now looking at 3D modeling, the 195 out of Autodesk 3ds Max is good. PGC Creo 191, pretty good. Uh, the Autodesk Maya is actually one of the better scores out of this laptop, 176. And then SolidWorks is a 97. Now, a little disclaimer here around the 3D modeling benchmarks. This laptop has a maximum graphics power of 70 watts. And this is that one thing that I was mentioning in the intro of the video that may be an issue for you. 
a laptop with an RTX 4060 that is aimed to you know perform well should have 90 to 100 watts of maximum graphics power. Basically, maximum graphics power is the amount of power allowable to be pushed to the GPU. And Dell has capped this laptop at 70 watts. Now, Dell is kind of famous for doing that. The XPS 16 is 70 watts of maximum graphics power. The XPS 14 is around 70 watts as well. And so I think the issue is they're bottlenecking what could be a great, great performing laptop and making it a good performing laptop. But the advantage of that in my opinion, from a buyer standpoint, is that no matter if you choose the Dell XPS 16 for around $3,200 or the Dell Inspiron 16 for around $1,599, you're gonna get almost the same performance, which is pretty amazing. Okay, now let's go ahead and check out the video editing export times. Two minutes and 36 seconds for the 4K export. That's a nine minute 4K clip placed in Premiere Pro, export out at full quality 4K settings. 236 is fantastic. And that is why I was saying it's amazing to see this laptop, the Inspiron 16, being equal in competition to the Dell XPS 16, which is a much higher price. You know, for instance, the Dell XPS 16 has a two minute and 17 second export time. So only about 15 seconds faster. Looking at the 6K export, 21 minutes and 29 seconds compared to the Dell XPS 16 at 20 minutes and seven seconds. So again, nearly half the price, equal in performance, which is really great for you, the consumer. Now, unless you're somebody trying to buy the Dell XPS 16, but again, you're buying the Dell XPS 16 for all of the fancy premium elements of the laptop. You're not getting any huge advantage of performance by choosing the Dell XPS 16. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at playback. For the Premiere Pro playback, 4K is zero drop frames, which is great, of course, if you're a 4K video editor. 6K B-RAW, 99 drop frames. 6K red footage, 1,758. So great performance. Even with that bottlenecking of the 70 watts of maximum graphics power, I would honestly have expected this to have performed a little bit less because in the Dell XPS 16, that actually caused quite a bit of trouble with the 6K B-RAW playback. As you can see, I'm gonna pull that up on the screen, 1,675 drop frames for B-RAW, 1,809 drop frames for red footage. So seeing that the Dell Inspiron handled that better is really, really great for the buyer looking to save a little money, but still get a really premium laptop like the Inspiron 16. So again, great upgrade path of the RAM and the storage, a color accurate matte display, which I personally like matte, doesn't have all that reflectiveness to it, still color accurate, an aluminum build quality, great keyboard, this is a fantastic buy for somebody looking for a good price laptop with still great performance. Remember, links are in the description if you're ready to make a purchase or click or tap the screen here for more videos to help with your buying decision. I'll see you in the next one.